Hello again all, and I've got some more shirts for you to uh, have a look at. The only difference being this time is that these shirts are fakes. They are counterfeits, they are not legitimate. I know that because one of them I was given, knowing that it was a fake, and the other one I bought unwittingly, and having looked into it, it most definitely is 100% a fake. So the reason why I'm doing this is, firstly to show sort of the drawbacks of of, of fakes and also because I'm doing an article on my website whereby I'm going to be looking into more detail fake shirts why people buy them why you maybe shouldn't buy them the thoughts of other people such as collectors and football fans and also my experiences with them myself so these are the two shirts which are featured in the article and the first one is the Brazil away shirt from I think 2012-13 this was given to me by a friend who imported a sizable amount of these shirts with the intention of selling them. Now he'd give it to me for free, so probably all the profit that he was going to make was lost in that single bit of charity. But I decided to go for the Brazil shirt. He had all sorts of different teams, Spain, France, Italy, the Netherlands, etc. But at this point, uh, Neymar was my favourite player, so I thought, you know what, let's go for it. He was still wearing number 11 at this point. He was you know, still relatively fresh to the scene, I guess. Uh, and looking at it, it's really not that bad. Um, you can see that the number 11 is starting to sort of tear away a bit, but that happens with wear and tear. It, it does happen. Um, may it say that I probably wore this shirt for about two months. Of, well, you know, it would be heavy use. I wore it a couple of times a week to play football in. But two months and it's already falling apart. Like, I've got Chelsea shirts that are in similar condition or worse, but I was wearing them for years. So uh, that instance, you kind of think, hmm, something suspect there. Now, if you look at the back, um, then, <laughs> then, uh, yeah. So, as you can see, that the rear. That didn't hold up nearly as well as the front. One of the number ones has decided to pretty much disappear from the shirt, leaving him looking like he's number one and now playing in goals. Uh, part of his A has disappeared. It looks like he's now called Name Mucker, which is interesting. Uh, but again, these things happen. The quality of some of the uh, transfers is questionable. Even if it is a Nike version, um, it's not necessarily means it's fake. You could have just got unlucky, or maybe you didn't look after the shirt correctly. You didn't wash it, you know, using the correct methods, etc. There is one thing though that, other than the fact that I was explicitly told that it was not legit, that stands out for it being fake. If you look at the collar, this area of the shirt. Most shirts you were familiar with, if you look at yours, at the very least has the Nike swoosh, the size, and maybe some of the bits of information or a design or some sort of something like that. This one clearly has nothing. It's blank. There's nothing at all. It's not like it's hidden away. It's literally just blue. Now, this is a Nike shirt. They don't leave that blank. And if you look at the photograph of a legitimate one online, they haven't left it blank. It does have the Nike swoosh. It has the sizing. There is also like a little motif, which I think is something to do with the Federation or something, or something to that effect. But clearly there is some information there that the counterfeiters of this shirt decided mm, were surplus to requirements. Now, I mean, look, if you, if, when you're wearing it, no one can see it. I get that. But if you're trying to at least replicate a replica, then you might want to get that right. I mean, at least put the size. That's not, you know, something, just something, anything. It just looks weird without anything there. Especially when you see it, in re you know, the real one. The material itself, the shirt, I mean, that's obviously, I didn't wear it for that long. Um, it seemed to have held up okay. And the design other than that is fine. I mean, it's just an international shirt, so it's blue. You can't really get things too many things wrong with that. Um, but that was my first shirt, and 
it served a purpose, I guess. However, if we fast forward a few years, and I'm now collecting shirts as a hobby. Authentic shirts, legitimate shirts. I'm scouring through eBay, and uh, I find this listing where it has a Atlantic Madrid shirt, brand new, of course, for £20 and free postage. Bargain. So back then I was a bit naive to it all and I was like, yes, I'm going to buy that. So I purchased it. Just before it arrived, I thought to myself, hmm, is this too good to be true? <laughs> anyway, I opened the package and yeah, yeah, too good to be true, right? The material, the material feels like it's made out of tissue paper. It's like if I give it enough of a pull, I could probably tear it in half, which is always a great start. You can say what you want about Nike, but the material they use is pretty high-end. Certainly on marquee teams like Atletico Madrid, they're going to put some effort into it. So this is this was a great start. So I was like, okay, that's what we're dealing with. Fine. If you look at the tags, as you can see, I've not even taken them off. I've not worn this shirt. I've not done anything with this shirt. Up until now, it's been stored away for about four years. So this is the first time I've actually done anything with it. It has the Atletico Madrid logo on the on the tag. However, if you go on the other side, where it uses is meant to say like Atletico Madrid home 2015, 16, whatever year it was, it doesn't have that. It just has a load of random numbers, which that's always a good indication that the shirt is fake. If they've just used a generic tag, it might just say Nike jersey or home. That is an indicator that it's fake. Also, on one of the other tags attached, uh, there's a word misspelled. Uh, it's the first word on that tag, so, you know, if you're going to do a typo, at least have it done on, like, the seventh word in, not the first word, but whatever. Uh, also, on this one, there's a secret that we may or may not be aware of with regards to fake shirts. So you have the tags on the inside of the shirt, and if I can maybe, let's do a little bit of zooming and I'll put it into the centre. Right, so you've got these ones where it shows you the materials used and how to wash it. Well, if, if you cycle through and you and you notice, I mean, firstly, there's a bit of thread that's just randomly there, so that just shows the quality of the build. If you get anywhere and you see a number that has been penned onto the tag, that's a clear indication that it's fake. Nike or whoever it may be, they've got no need to do that. They've got proper procedures put in place to track shirts. Whoever counterfeited the shirt were clearly using it to track where it was. And for whatever reason, Athletic Madrid, it was a number six. Uh, so if you've got anything like that on your shirts, uh, I'd be cautious and sceptical as to its authenticity. Now, remember I said I paid £20 for this shirt, which is a bargain, right? Well, it's even more of a bargain when you realise that it's not designed to be the replica version, it's designed to be the player issue version, which is £100. So, and also bear in mind that on that version, those tags I just showed you on the inside, they are not meant to be there. They're meant to be transferred onto the inside of the material as so not to irritate the players when they're wearing them. So clearly some lines were crossed, and some wires were crossed when it came to designing this shirt, they didn't quite realize which one they were going for. It is the player issue version because there's stuff to do with the center of the collar, there's like different tapings, etc. There are some ventilation holes, um, which actually on this one are clear, on the real one they should be red. It's small details like that. But it's the glaring massive issue, which looking at this shirt right now, and if you don't own it or if you're not too familiar with it, you might not recognize it. You think, oh, it's got the logo, it's got the sponsors, it looks, it's got the correct colours, it looks like a Madrid shirt. In the legitimate shirt, it has two extra white vertical stripes. This one has four vertical stripes, right? And then it, it gets to the red and it goes to the blue. On the real one, and it make, makes a difference if it's the player issue version or not, it has another white in between the red and the, and the blue. So there's six of them. And it's not like it's a thin one, it's a legitimate stripe like the rest of these. So clearly, again, whoever drew this up was either blind or couldn't count. So when you, when you see that, 
and you know what it's meant to be, you kind of think, oh my god, like, really? You know, you've got some of the details right, I and mean, at least this is one, it does have a sizing on it, and it does have other bits and bobs, but you can't even get the correct amount of vertical stripes. <sighs> you know, you've you got it, your mind boggles. But that's it, those are my two shirts. I, I don't really buy anything from eBay anymore because it's just a minefield. 90% of shirts on there are fake and 9% I don't care for and the 1% that would be interesting in me are either massively overpriced or I just... You just don't know, it's, it's too dangerous. Um, but I'm going to go through my shirts and see if there are any of the ones that are suspiciously fake and maybe I'll do another video on those. But... These are the shirts featured in my article. If you're interested in reading more about it, then my suggestion is to follow my Instagram. That's where I post all my updates on how my website's doing. Uh, but if not, then just go to the website and it will be updated on there at some point, maybe next week. I just need a few more things to add to it and then uh, it'll get released. Those are my two shirts. Hopefully the next video I do is about legitimate shirts this time because, you know, obviously I'm not the greatest fan of them as a collector. It kind of ruins your collection if you've got fake ones in there because ultimately they're worthless. Uh, and it's not anybody can go online and buy a shirt for £10. It's more difficult to buy a legitimate one. But I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you learned something. Maybe you, uh, maybe you did. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I will uh, see you next time. Ciao.